Welcome to Lazio Lounge, the one and only Lazio podcast in English, brought to you every week with co-host Vittorio Campanile and Alison McKenzie. You can listen and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify and Spreaker. Please remember to rate and review the show. You can also support our show on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. Membership starts at just $2 a month and you will help us improving our show. And now it's time to talk about Lazio. Welcome everybody to another episode of Lazio Lounge. What a week it has been. What a week. Seven days ago we were concerned, problems, Lazio must have win against Fiorentina, then there was Torino match, very difficult, then there was Milan against San Siro. Probably the toughest fixture this year for Lazio and What happens? Lazio win against Fiorentina, Lazio wins against Torino, Lazio finally, after 30 years, wins at San Siro in Campionato against AC Milan, and everything is brighter. I'm here to talk about it with Alistair McKenzie. Hello, Alistair, how are you? Hello, yeah, very good. I'm in a quite good mood, to be honest, after the last week. It's made me, made me very happy and full of joy. I don't understand why. And Jerry Mancini, welcome back, Jerry, how are you? Not by yourself? Well, after these seven days, I couldn't be better, honestly. Guys, uh, great performance in this last seven days, but I think we have to start from Milan Lazio. Last time Lazio won was 1989, own goal of Paolo Maldini. Uh, in, my, in my video on YouTube, I said, well, I think we have to thank Maldini again because... The transfer market he made this summer was terrible, and that's why Lazio beat AC Milan. I'm too harsh, Alistair, or do you agree with me? Well, no, that's a good point, actually. I haven't thought of that before. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the team that he's put together, well, it's not just him, let's be honest, but the team that Milan have put together, let's be totally clear about this, is, is far from being a historic um, Milan side and um, I don't think we should take that away from the fact that they went to San Siro last night with that weight of history against them and they managed to get a result and managed to, to get another win late on which is so encouraging to see after the Fiorentina game as well um, but yeah I mean that, that Milan team is uh, is not what it used to be to, to be nice <laughs> if I'm honest but yeah like I say If, we, if we'd gone into this run of fixtures and said we're going to get three wins out of three from Fiorentina, Torino and Milan, we would have um, probably thought, you know, if someone had said that to us, you probably thought they would have been taking something. So, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's been quite a week. Jerry, do you agree with me that we have to thank Maldini again? Absolutely. The team's not good for Milan. Uh, I'm happy that uh, we were able to win after 30 years. Luis Alberto came with a mission. He, he was his vintage uh, Alberto from two years ago, which was a very great sight to see. But uh, Nzagi was prepared, and he he, uh, he came away with the victory. It's nice to see that we've won three in a row. And uh, it looks like there's uh, some good form coming for Lazio, especially coming into a big match against Celtic on Thursday. So hopefully we can uh, continue what uh, we've done the last three, four matches and uh, build off it. One thing I was thinking about yesterday is that watching AC Milan, it, it reminded me a lot about uh, Pioli's Lazio in a certain way. If you remember, in the first 30 minutes, Pioli's Lazio was pressing very high, creating big problems to the other, the other teams that were struggling. Then in the second half, the team was, you know, giving up. They didn't, they weren't able to press high for 95 minutes. And then the other things, the other thing that really remind me about that team was when the situation was like in draw, like like at that stage it was one all. Purely often, often if not every time, Lazio was still uh, not winning the match. Would take off a midfielder and put. A very offensive midfielder, like he did yesterday, when he put in, who was it, Leao, and, and took off uh, a midfielder. And I said, "Wow, this is purely 
and, and when you do like that, or you win, but it's very difficult because you lost all your balance, or you lose because the other team gets so many counter attack that will score. And that's exactly what happened. Now, I don't want to blame too much Pioli because, as I said before, I think this team, Milan team is really a bad team. But, you know, I said that at the beginning, I didn't think Pioli was the right man for AC Milan. And I think he, he made the same mistakes all over again, Alistair. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, to, to a certain extent, you do kind of look at that team he's got and you think, well, how much more can he do, to be honest? But yeah, I, I know what you mean. I don't think the changes he made particularly worked. But then again, to Lazio's credit, um, you know, Jerry said already, Inzaghi came there with a plan and um, and got his team to deliver it. And I think that comes back to the same thing that, that, that we've talked about a few times here, which is that Inzaghi's constantly been banging the drum about the fact that it's not really a question of what tactics he's he's using or what players he's selecting, but it's about the attitude and their application when they get out there. And I think there's been a real, real uh, change um, change of the tide in the last um, few weeks in terms of this team's mentality, their ability to put in a 90-minute performance, and also their ability when they're um, up against it, in, in away games especially, but also... To, to be able to find a way of, of winning games because last night, you know, it was a scrappy second half, wasn't it? You could tell both teams were tired and, and it really felt like it could have gone either way, to be honest. There weren't, weren't loads of chances, but for Lazio to then have the quality to finish that off and it was some finish from Correa as well. I, I think that that's been a really encouraging sign for me has been that you know the team's mentality seems to improve, and along with it, you get things like Korea starting to score again, which the two things probably linked. I don't know. Do you, do you agree with that, Jerry? I believe that uh, you're right. That Inzaghi did come with a plan, but uh, another thing I, I I felt that is that we have a leader on a team that that makes sure that the team is stepping up. I remember last time on the show uh, when they lost this ball. Vittorio said a good point. He said that the only pl player that we have in this team as a leader is uh, Leva. Yesterday I saw that not only did Nzagi have a plan, but Immobile was leading the way on the field. And I, I think that was very important because with Milan, Pioli didn't have... I think Pioli lost it after the first 30 minutes. I agree with, uh, with Vittorio. But... I think that with, with Immobile, he, he is a, a game changer, which really has made a difference in this match against Torino, against Fiorentina. And I think that Lazio has finally found that leader that can really change the game, even when the game is not going in our way, that, that we're, we're having a hard time. As, as you said yourself, it was a very scrappy second half and that uh, we were struggling to get something going. But even in the first half, the first 20 minutes, Lazio didn't look that good. And then who who had the first three chances of the match? It, it's Immobile. Immobile hits the crossbar. Immobile gets the, a, a lucky stop by Donnarumma. He makes a very poor stop. He pushes the ball out. He could have gone better. Uh, made a better save on that. And then Lazzari makes a beautiful uh, pass into the box. And, it, and it's Immobile scoring. So I think that this team has finally found that other, that other leader that Inzaghi can depend on that has helped lots of the last three, four matches, which has allowed him to be in, in the top four right now. I think, as, as both of you were saying, the second half wasn't great to see. But, but I don't remember a big chance from AC Milan. I don't remember a, a big save from Strakosha. Yeah, you can say Chalanoglu had a, a free kick and Strakosha saved it quite easily. I don't think that was nothing special. Uh, so, you know, you, you can see. I, I, I remember the Inter match. If you remember, the second half, Lazio didn't have a chance. Yes, Inter didn't play very well. Didn't create that many chances. But big teams, in the key moment, like in the second half, don't allow you to do nothing. And that's exactly what happened yesterday with Lazio, right? Lazio didn't allow Milan to, to create nothing. 
And at the first mistake, because Lazio wasn't playing very well, at the first mistake that Milan made, we punished them. Because if you see, uh, there are three defenders of AC Milan and Luis Alberto and Correa. And even though if they have one player more, Luis Alberto is good enough to find the spot and uh, put Correa in front of the goalkeeper. And Lazio punished. That's exactly how big teams play. And so that's, that's for me the very positive sign. Especially... Because, and I want to hear what you were thinking at that moment. Immobile went out because he wasn't 100% fit. By the way, he trained today regularly, so it's nothing bad. After 10 minutes, Caicedo, who came in for, for Chiro, goes out. He has an injury, a shoulder injury. We don't know if he's going to play Thursday. It's very unlikely. And Cataldi came in because we, Inzaghi didn't feel right to put at the canyon. I thought, okay, guys, if you're lucky, we're going to draw this. And he said, we won. So, you know, there are signs of changes in this team. I don't know, Alison, what you were thinking when you saw Casado coming out. Yeah, well, it wasn't good to see. I mean, we've just been talking about the fact that um, I'd just written an article two days before then talking about the kind of immobile dependence question, which is always flagging up every time he's in good form everyone wants to talk about what Lazio would be like if anything happened to him which is fair enough but then again um, I did point out his consistency is one of his most remarkable traits he is always there and he's always wanting to play games and yeah but you even see him, e you see him... even Real Madrid was Ronaldo dependent right I mean if you have a star Barcelona is Messi yeah, yeah. this show exactly. is Vittorio dependent you know when you have a star It always <laughs> make a difference. All right, calm down, get off your throne. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, but there you go. But I, I thought I cursed it when we saw Immobile come off with a problem, and then you see Caicedo come off with a problem, and all of a sudden you do realize, wow, this team is short staffed when it comes to strikers because you've got Correa up there as your only remaining striker. And let's remember, although he's been doing a good job up there, he's not really a striker. That's not his natural position. It's something he's he's been uh, adjusted to. And beyond that, in this squad, the only other option really is kind of uh, Bobby Adekanye, you might say, who's likewise is not a natural striker and is being adapted into that role. So suddenly the options are pretty thin on the ground when that starts happening. Thankfully, from what we've read so far, it doesn't seem like either injury is particularly serious. But, um, you know, it's not, it's, it's not really a time to be talking about what happens if this goes wrong, what happens if this goes wrong. Just enjoy the moment when Immobile is playing like this. You just have to sit back and enjoy it. And Alberto behind him, Jerry's already mentioned him once tonight. My God, that guy had a good game. I mean, that was uh, he's had a very good season uh, in general, but that was his, his you know one of his real master classes of the season last night. Um, he was absolutely superb. And he's playing with such confidence, with such freedom, that you just know you're going to get chances if he's playing and he's in that form and um, I think you know Jerry made a good point there about uh, Immobile taking on the leadership role as well and I think Alberto's kind of doing that just more by example than anything else if he's setting those standards on the pitch and he's playing at that level everyone's desperately trying to keep up with him and I think it does just drag up the level of the team's performance when you see those those two players playing at that level Jerry, do you agree with Alistair? Yes, I, I agree. Sorry about that. Um, I believe, first off, with Caicedo, it's unfortunate he got hurt, but um, it, it happens. It's You can't have Chido Immobile playing every game for 90 minutes. If he plays 90 minutes every match, you're going to burn him out. You got Europa League, you got Serie A, and we haven't even gone to Coppa Italia yet. So... Yes, he's, he's our number one striker, and you want him to play all game, but you, you need to depend on your depth. And if we can't depend on Caicedo coming in, and if uh, anybody else, even Correa, which was another option we, we just we, we had at the beginning of the year as, a, as another possible striker, then we're in trouble. But uh, it's unfortunate with Caicedo. I, I would like to see maybe Cataldi step up now beside uh, Correa if if, uh, if Immobile and Caicedo are hurt that would be interesting to see I know that uh, I think in the last match last year against Torino uh, 
Cataldi played up front beside um, Immobile. So that could be an interesting option as well. As for the leadership, yeah, I, I agree. Luis Alberto had a superb game yesterday. He stepped up very, very nice. And he's leading by example. Last year, he promised that he promised to uh, Lotito that he was going to make Champions League for, this, for the team. And unfortunately, he didn't deliver. But it looks like this year, he may want to uh, deliver that, uh, that promise. And in so far, they're, they're, they're doing a very good job. They just got to stay consistent. And hopefully uh, it, it comes through at the end of the season. We can't get ahead because we were in the same situation last year where at the uh, winter break, we were in the fourth spot. And then the second half of the season, we went uh, we went downhill. So I think Nzaki's doing a good job using his bench, using Patrick the last three games, and deciding to go with Bostos yesterday, having Radu on the left side, and now uh, he went back to Lazzari. So it's good that he's, he's mixing up Matisic and Lattery. The back end, he's switching it up with Patrick now in, with Bastos and Radu. Hopefully we see Felipe maybe on Thursday. It, it's, it's good that he's doing that, and he's not overusing our, our star players that come, come uh, next uh, in January if we make uh, further into Europa League and then we have Copa Italia that we don't fall into the injuries that we did last, uh, last year. I just want to pick up on that because I was just wanting to ask ask you guys what you think now that we've had this w- this week of three wins, two of them coming away from home against uh, against big teams, and then the best performance of the season, in my opinion, against Torino on Wednesday night. That has totally altered the complexion. Like Jerry's just mentioning the Champions League race there. And now we're in fourth, granted level on points with two other teams, but one point of third place as well. And it does, you know, we said coming into this run of games, this is going to be crucial to Lazio's objectives for this entire season, this period, both in Serie A and in Europe. But my question is, Vittorio, what, what do you think we've learned about this team from the fact that they've stepped up to that challenge and they've managed to deliver these results having had so many issues with you know doubts over their mentality and collapses and so on earlier in the season like are you viewing the team completely differently now do these results change an awful lot before answering to your question we have a breaking news because both Marusic and Radus are injured they're probably going to miss a couple of weeks so you know a little bit of bad luck for Lazio uh I was hoping to see Marzic playing this Thursday, um, but I, I think I think these three matches up were very important for the team because uh, I I thought they need to win some match to gain their confidence because this team is lacking of confidence. Um, at the same time, it was important to beat these type of teams because. Everybody was talking very highly about Fiorentina, uh, what a great team, Ribéry, etc. Lazio went there with just one day of training, uh, arrived on Friday from Glasgow, Saturday one training and then Sunday they had to play and they beat them. Uh, they deserve to beat them, so they played much better. I think, you know, the confidence in football is really the key of success. And this is really important. The other thing is, Maybe we're going to talk about later about Miniko Isavic because I don't think we still saw the the Sergei we want to see. But I, Luis Alberto is one of the secrets of this team. And seeing him playing so well, Chiro Mobile is back. Uh, Tuku Correa have scored four goals in the last four matches. Uh, Acerbi didn't start the season very well. Now he's back to his top form. I mean, th- this team is playing great football. and And I hope that the match uh, of last Sunday have proved that this team has become, has acquired the winning mentality of the big teams, right? Even if I don't play well, I'm still able to beat, to win and get the three points out. Because this was probably the biggest concern about Lazio, of Simone Inzaghi, right? If Lazio play great football, then they're probably going to win the match. But you not can imagine or believe that in one year, you're going to play every single match at your best, playing great football. There are going to be a lot of matches where you're not going to perform as well as you expect. 
and still you have to win that match. And I thought yesterday happened. Lazio didn't play great football, but deserved to win and got the three points. I think that's really important. I think that, uh, yeah, definitely winning can become a habit, you know, and the fact that Lazio had struggled to string two consecutive wins together for most of the season tells you a lot. And I think, I really hope that kind of, it sounds a bit obvious, but winning games breeds more wins because they, the, the way those wins have come about have been very different. You know, that you can make comparisons, I suppose, between the Milan and Fiorentina games, but then the Torino one was something completely different. And I think, like you say, teams need confidence. Lazio will have a lot more confidence now. And uh, I just hope that <laughs> the one thing, I don't know, Jerry, if, if you think this is totally um, going a bit too far, but I, I'm worried that after this run of results, I, I just hope there's no overconfidence, no kind of complacency when it comes to playing Lecce on Sunday, because that's the, on paper, the easiest game this team has had in this entire run. And uh, we, I guess, we, we, we need those three points, and perhaps a lot of people are expecting those three points now, but they haven't been an easy team for a lot of teams to play so far this season. Uh, I absolutely agree. I think the the result when they lost the spall has really uh, changed the team since after the international break with the selection of uh, players that Inzaghi started with and then since then they they have the squad has changed other than losing to Inter I think that the team has uh, looked much better they've come more confident against lesser opponents and much stronger opponents and the mentality it, it seems as if Inzaghi has got this team going now and also since the uh, the incident with uh, Immobile when he was benched against uh, Inter, I, I think that it, it helped the squad re remember that uh, the team has to play at 100% and also has to accept accountability when uh, the coach makes a decision. And since that, uh, that decision that was made by Inzaghi, it seems as if the team has played together as a unity and uh, has been playing strong. Everyone's picking up the, the slack for anyone who's hurt. Everyone's playing their role. You see it, like I said again, Patrick's a prime example. He's not, he hasn't been the best player for Lazio in the last couple of years. He was expected to, to be a, this player that was supposed to be really good. Uh, unfortunate, it, it hasn't turned out to what we wanted. But in fairness, in the last three matches, he's, he's provided Lazio with some depth on the right side, which is beneficial because Dennis Vavro is still having a hard time adjusting to the league. And, and it's, it's a player that, that will help Lazio in the long term. And uh, players such as that that can come in to play Lazio can gain an opportunity and can help. So hopefully they continue to, to play how they are the last three games. They played a great game against Torino, and they came back to life against Milan. Didn't play as good. But for the first time, we finally saw Lazio deliver that that win that isn't convincing but we needed that goal at the end of the at the end of the game the last 10 minutes Alistair shall we talk about Milinko Savic because he I don't, don't know if you follow him on Instagram he released a pic uh, what was it Saturday probably saying uh, uh, you know we have to win and so well, I'm gonna make it happen I didn't think he played that well, to be honest with you. But uh, Lazio at the end managed to win. But I don't know. I think he needs to, to, to rest because he, because he played at, Gal at Glasgow against Celtic. He played at Firenze. He played at home against Torino. And he played yesterday against AC Milan. Four matches in a row in, what is it, 10 days. I think he needs to rest and recover because we didn't see the Milinko Savic we were hoping to see. Yeah, um, I, I think you saw that with a few players, to be honest, getting a bit tired, especially in the second half. So that, no, that I think is worth considering. But just in general, I think he's not quite been at the standards that we've come to expect from him um, more recently when, when other players have. Having said that, I think that, uh, you know, he, we were quite qu critical of Pioli at the start of the podcast, but I think something he actually got right from last night was 
getting uh, Krunic to essentially target Milinkovic Savic and um, almost man mark him for big parts of that game because he wasn't allowed any time on the ball really he was always under pressure uh, he got frustrated he ended up picking up a yellow card at one point and I don't think he really managed to influence the game in the way that uh, the way that Lazio would like him to um, then again you could say the fact that so much attention was being paid to him that Luis Alberto was kind of running right on the other side but uh, yeah I think that you do need to be careful in the way that you rotate the side when the fixtures are so uh, piling up so much like Jerry just said and um, yeah I, I, I think I'm not sure I think he is still in the probable lineups for for Thursday for Lazio but I don't think it'd be the worst idea to you know, leave him on the bench and maybe bring him on the second half like like he did against Wren, which was I, I don't know if you guys agree, but I think that was his best performance of the season and he was only on the pitch for about half an hour. I agree with you, Alistair. I, I think you're right. You gotta use Savage coming off the bench on Thursday. And, and in fairness, I wouldn't be upset if they lost to Celtic and they were out of the Europa League. I think it helps Nzagi with the squad he has. He, he, he can just focus on the, on qualifying for Champions League in Serie A. And he doesn't have to worry about squad rotation every week. Yeah, you want your team to qualify for the next the round of 32 for Europa League. But if, if it makes us better in Serie A to qualify for Champions League, then why not? Like, you're, you're only... It's only good if it's going to help you. And I think, in a way, it's good for, for Lazio because it gives them a second option to, to make the uh, Champions League. But at the same time, it will make them better in the league just because they can, they can rest the Immobile every week now. They, can, like, they have more rest during the week and they don't have to rely on that Thursday match. Um, I don't agree totally on that because... Yes, you can rest Immobile, you can rest Milinkovic Savic, but at the same time, this would mean that, for example, Berisha would never play again. Uh, Marzic would hardly play uh, in defense. Someone like Bastos or Luis Felipe would never play. And that would create bad uh, atmosphere in the locker room because, you know, there are going to be a lot of players unhappy because they don't play. And the other thing important is you can give Adekanye a start and see where he's at. Vavro, he can start in the Europe League and see if he's, uh, you know, ready to play Serie A. Plus, plus Europe League, it's, for me, an important uh, competition. If you were saying Coppa Italia, then yeah, absolutely. Europe League, I still hope that Lazio fights and, and try to go as further as possible. Um, said this, I totally agree. I think Milinko Savic shouldn't play uh, Thursday against Celtic. I think Lazio has enough good players. Let's start Berisha for once. Let's start Cataldi. He, Cataldi is playing really, really well in the last matches and has started only against Torino, which is something I don't understand. Luis Felipe, I don't know what's happening, but in the last four matches, Luis Felipe never started a game. And I have to say, I know Alistair is going to be very upset. Bastos was bad yesterday again. The the goal Milan score is Bastos' fault, and it was the same thing uh, in Glasgow. So you know, I, I don't understand why Bastos start in front of of uh, Luis Felipe. There's something behind, probably. Maybe he's injured, or, or maybe. So, say again. Bas Bastos is a natural goal scorer. All you saw there was his <laughs> natural killer instinct coming to the fore once again. In the wrong goal, though. <laughs> yeah, but all he sees is the back of the net, and that's where he's sending the ball. I tell you, if we if we stuck him at the right end of the pitch, he's chesting that into the Milan goal, no problem. But you see, I think, I think, yeah, well, uh, Europe League is too important. You derailed I... your train of thought there. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Vittorio, you, yep. you're right. But yep. if you're going to be playing Europa League, and you're not going to start Velan Barisha and you're going to keep him on the bench, and you're going to keep other players on the bench and decide not to start Cataldi. And, uh, and like, it, what's the point of having of Europa League? 
you, it's another option to start these guys, and, and we're not starting them. And it's it's frustrating. We spend 10 million euro for a player like Barisha, and we still don't know what we have. Like, mm. He was amazing in Salzburg, and we don't play him in Serie A. We don't play him in the Europa League. So, in my opinion, he's gone after this season, unfortunately, because he's not... He, I think he has the, the, the potential to be a starter, and it's unfortunate he's not he's not becoming that starter in Lazio, but um, it, it, it's, that's what frustrates me, is that we have this, this competition. Why are we starting Malinkovic Savic four games in a row, maybe five on Thursday, even though we have to win, you have to depend on that depth, and that's, that's the one downfall that Lazio has compared to like Inter and uh, Napoli and Juventus, is they have a deep squad that they can rely on the alternative, that they don't need to worry about Dybala playing tonight and a Ronaldo playing tonight. Whereas Lazio doesn't start Immobile, there's question marks. If if we don't start Savage, there's question marks. And that and that's one thing that Nzagi's done well in his time since he's came is that he's never had that that bona fide superior squad, but everybody questions why is Immobile coming off yesterday 60th minute and he doesn't have another option but he has to make that decision because if he keeps on overplaying Immobile he's going to run into injuries like last season so it, it, I think Inzaghi's done a great job in that situation in that circumstance but it's unfortunate and, and if we're going to buy players such as Dennis Vavro as well for 11 million we, we got to start playing these guys to see what they are worth we can't play them one game a month if you're playing one game a month, they're not going to get rhythm. They're not going to get that flow, and you're not going to know what they have. Like a Jermisi last year. Mm. He's thrown into substitution as a sub, sorry, against Milan. He gets the foul in that box at the 75th minute or 80th minute, and he gets the penalty shot. We lose one nothing, which at that time was three big points. And we, we blame Jermisi's bad. Jermisi's bad, but is Jermisi really bad, or is it that we're not – using player options selections very properly that we have these players but we need to play them on a regular basis to see what we really have you can't decide in 10 minutes of a match what what he is it's yes just, it, it's hard right that's a great point and yeah we've talked about Barisha quite a lot before because it's amazing when you look at his statistics how few games he started and you can't really expect like you say a player to make that kind of impact if they're not having opportunities to and if especially if they're not being given consecutive games to kind of get up to speed but um, I just wanted to come in there because we had a question on Twitter about one of the players you talked about there Danilo Cataldi from Erfan Gaharian who says no Cataldi again and still, Parolo is far from at his best performance. I don't like that despite Cataldi's great performances, others are still ahead of him. If it continues, I think he will lose momentum and passion to work hard when he never gets first or second pick, no matter how good he is. So Vittorio, do you think that's a potential issue for Inzaghi if he keeps overlooking these guys that they're going to stop putting in the effort? I don't think uh, Cataldi would be one of them. I think, you know, as as I said, Cataldi is such a Lazio fan that he will always give everything. But, you know, it was surprising to see Parolo coming in before Cataldi, uh, especially because Parolo played against Torino, didn't play that well, Firenze, Fiorentina, etc., etc. Uh, so, um, I'm surprised to draw that Cataldi didn't start more matches because he, he's in great form. I believe that he will start <laughs> Thursday, but you never know. Uh, going back to Berisha, well, he played the, the against Cluji and was terrible. Uh, I, I fear, I fear he's going to leave in January, not in June. Uh, but yeah, I hope Inzaghi makes a little bit more uh, turnover. And uh, Sampdoria scored at the last minute, and. Uh, and uh, give him a, a bigger chance. The problem, and Inzaghi said it, when was it? Before uh, Torino, Lazio Torino said that uh, it's tough for Berisha or Andre Anderson, for example, to play because the midfield, the central midfield position, there are so many good players. Who do you take off? You know, That's why I, I hope in Europe League that Berisha has more chances and Miniko Isavic doesn't play. Uh, Vittorio? Cataldi can't play Thursday. 
because he picked up a second yellow card uh, last match. And yeah. He he, uh, he picked up a second yellow card, so we, we might have to see Barisha come in the midfield with uh, maybe Luis Alberto, I, I would assume. Maybe Luis Alberto or uh, maybe a Parolo again, who we, we might have to see. Talking about Europa League for a sec, looking ahead to the game on Thursday with Celtic. I had a question for, from Alexander Mickelson again on Twitter. Um, is our success in Serie A an excuse to give up the Europa League? Or is it the contrary, that because we're in a good run of form, we should go for a good result in the Europa League? What are your guys' thoughts? Start with you, Vittorio. Uh, no, I hope not. I hope that, you know, winning helps winning and we have to win even in Europa League. It's true, Lazio have to win, I believe, all the last three matches of the Europa League. But no, I hope we don't give up the Europa League. And uh, I think Inzaghi is going to do the best to win this match. So I, I don't think they're going to find an excuse. I hope that Lazio is going to rotate a lot of players. We already talked about Milinko Savic. Unfortunately, Cataldi cannot play, so I hope Berisha will start. Uh, Maruzic is out injured, so he won't have a chance. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, I don't know, maybe see Adekanya start. Maybe that's too much. But yeah, I think still Lazio have to fight for the Europe League. As I said, it's very important. And I don't think this is going to be an excuse. I, I, we, are, we don't have Mazzari as a manager. I agree. We, we need to uh, try to win the match. I, I absolutely agree. But you prove a good point. It, it, it's a, you know what? If you're, if you're, you have to use Europa League as a second tool to see what other players you have. So instead of playing Malinka Vesavich, Luis Alberto, play play other players that you're able to play, such as Benicia, and see what they can offer. Don't use the same players that you've used in Serie A again into the Europa League and you just burn them out and then they're not efficient anymore in either league. So, Well, I, I, I guess the issue is that some people will have here is that the team that is performing in Serie A is the team that's getting results. And Zaghi has shown a willingness to rotate in Europe this season. And up until this season, his rotated team has been enough to get through the group stages. And I don't think we were even particularly good in the group stages the last season, but we still qualified for the knockout stages with two games to spare. The difference this year is that the com group we're in is more competitive and the rotated team that Inzaghi has picked for the game so far has been incapable of getting the results. And now we're one bad result away from uh, being knocked out of the competition. So I guess the point is that we all like to see a rotated Lazio team come in and do the job and get a home win over a team like Celtic and you know pose some selection questions for Inzaghi. But we're three games into the tournament now, and we really haven't seen much evidence that they're capable of that. It's a, it's a very good point. But um, I, I trust Nzagi, and come Thursday, he'll come with the best 11. And if they win, everybody will be happy that whoever he starts, he was right. And then if they lose, you'll have to hear that welcome. Immobile didn't start, or how come that guy start? You're never gonna have satisfy both sides. But um, if they win, it's a it's a it's a bonus. I think they can win Thursday, but um, we'll, we'll just see how it plays out. They're playing at home, which is beneficial, and that's where Lazio normally does very well is at home. So hopefully they, they, they come with the three points. A draw is not good enough, so they'll they'll have to do whatever they can to win. And I think they can be Celtic. Because the last time they played against Celtic, I believe that they dominated 80, 90 minutes of the match. But an unfortunate uh, goal at the end. And uh, it's just a lucky bounce, right? So, But then again, you say it's a home match, but it looks like there's going to be more Celtic fans than Lazio fans in the stadium. <laughs> you, did, did you, is it 9,000 you, you said earlier? 9,000 Celtic fans expected, yeah, and um, the Lazio head of marketing came out earlier and said that uh, he ex they've sold about 14,000 tickets, so, you know, that makes for, what, 5,000 Lazio fans at the moment. 
I mean, the, the Corva Norda did see, had uh, brought out a statement saying that they're going to go into the Tribuna Tevere instead, so they aren't going to go on strike and just abandon the game completely, but yeah, as it stands, it does look like it's going to be a fairly pathetic turnout, kind of along the lines of what happened against Frankfurt last season, which is a really depressing sight, to be honest, to see the Olympico taken over by away fans on, on a home night. Even against Ren, there were very few Lazio fans. And this is, you know, you say it's because they don't care about Europe League. But even in Serie A against Torino, the, the, the Olimpico was half empty. This is in general. Lazio fans are becoming lazy. They, want, they prefer to watch the match at home, you know, on TV, on the sofa. You know, it's, it's well, much better, obviously. But, you know, it's completely I different. I think that there's definitely a culture of that um, and I actually met a, a guy the, the night before the Torino ga- game who's a Torino fan who lives in Rome and I said oh you must be going to the game tomorrow and he said nah I don't like going to the stadium I prefer to watch it on TV so that's the one time in the entire season he had a chance to actually see his team live and he decided he'd rather sit at home so there is definitely a culture of that but the um The, the crowd last season, yes, we're never going to fill the Olympico for every match, but it was still between 30,000 and 35,000, um, depending which figures you believe, the, the average crowd last season, which isn't bad at all. It's, it's the same as Roma have been getting. And, you know, we'd like to see more than that. And, you know, for the big games, we are, when we're pushing 50,000 and so on, you do wonder where those the rest of those guys are the rest of the time. But uh, I think that there is... There is a big gulf. I mean, yes, Torino wasn't brilliant, but it was a, still a big, big step up in attendance from the Ren game. So I think there really is an, an apathy about about the Europa League by this point, and there really is also um, a, a big drop off when we have evening games in midweek. That seems to be a big issue as well. Still, it's very important match. Still, the Celtic fan has been making, a, you know. Banners about Lazio fan. Uh, still, Lazio needs to win this match. It's very important. I, I don't justify nobody, honestly. Jerry, what's yeah. your thought about that? Um, If that's how they feel, let it, let it be. I think that uh, it's unfortunate that the fans don't want to come to the match, but um, it's... it's, it's It's, I guess it's something that I'm not really used to because when I watch fans, uh, Juventus, Inter, they do a very good job where the fans actually show up every match and the stadium's full. But it could be the fact that maybe Lazio fans are tired of watching Europa League and maybe finally want to see a Champions League that they haven't seen in seven seasons. So it, it, yeah. could, be, it could be overwhelming that they're just... They're, they're tired of seeing Europa League and they want to see Lotito start investing in more players. And it's not just Lotito's b- bought some decent players, but at the same time, it, it, he's done a good job keeping the same squad that has done well, which was two years ago. But he, he has to buy additional players in order for fans to say, you know what? The owner is investing, he's buying some good players, let's go watch the match. If, if the owner is not going to invest extra into the squad and is going to depend on the same squad every year and hope that one player or two players additional are going to help, it's not going to work like that. While other teams are spending 100 million euros. And I understand that there's the whole financial fair play and you can only spend so much, but Latito doesn't go near where he can spend to make his team better. So until he does that, he may earn more fans in that respect. Now, I don't know how the fans of, of Roma I, I, are, personally. I, I, I disagree. Sorry to interrupt you, but Leeds United is in championship. They've won twice the Champions League, and still they have 31, 33,000 fans every single match. You, don't, you support the team, not the players. If the team is rubbish, you're still a Leeds United fan, you're still a Lazio fan, you go to the match. It's not because you bought Cristiano Ronaldo that I am... A Lazio fan. I was a Lazio fan when Lazio had Magno Cavallo and still went to the stadium. If we start thinking that <laughs> I go to the match only because Cristiano Ronaldo, Lazio bought Cristiano Ronaldo, then you're not a fan. You know, you're not a Lazio fan. 
I, yeah. I, the one thing I'd I'd add to that as well is that I, I don't think enough um, importance has been placed on the match day experience, and that kind of terminology might make some people shudder, but it is important nowadays to basically be able to bring in your fair weather fans and your neutral fans and your general tourists and the kind of extras that really do make a difference in terms of bolstering the number of attendants. And it's very clear in Rome here that Roma are doing that and Lazio aren't doing that. You go down... I live not far from um, the station, the metro station that takes you to the Vatican City. If you go down there the day before, two days before match day, there are people dressed up in Roma kits promoting their game, trying to sell tickets to the match. Um, all around town near Castel Sant'Angelo they have little pop-up tents trying to um, convince people. There's a lot more marketing around the club. There's a lot more club shops in the centre. Despite all this, I should say, Roma don't actually get much bigger crowds. Actually had a lower average attendance than Lazio last season. But that is something that the club are not doing a good enough job on, in my opinion, is that marketing, that ability to kind of convince people that it's a nice day out, that it's something to go and do. You know, it's it's something to take your family to. It's something to visit while you're in town. And, and they have they have improved this season. Sorry, one final thing. They have improved this season in terms of the match they experience once you're at the stadium. They've done more outside the ground. There's more um, merchandise stalls. Once you're uh, and things like that. Once you're inside, they've been doing a big light show during the warm up and things, um, and making it more of a kind of festival atmosphere. But I still don't think that the kind of pre-match stuff around the city is nearly where it should be. I can tell you, being to Manchester City match or Manchester United, it's like going to a, another planet completely. You know, Lazio make it nearly complicated to go to the match, right? It's, it's annoying, you don't see the pitch very well, uh, um, you know, if you want to drink, it's far away, and so on. If you go to Manchester City, it's, it's amazing. Kids can play outside with the PlayStation, there is a hub with the PlayStation, there's a great uh, shop there, there's a lot of games for kids before the beginning of the match, obviously there are two pubs to drink, eat, and things like that. The Stadio Olimpico has nothing, so... You know, we are ages behind the Premier League and things like that. So that's a very valid point that Lazio and Roma should do something about. Still, you know, I think Lazio fans should, should go to the matches more and don't find excuse. Because the, the other thing, Alistair, is a lot of Lazio fans say, ah, I don't give money to Lotito. I don't go to matches uh, because... Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I try to say it in many ways. You're not giving money to Lotito. You are not giving money to Lazio. And then you don't have to complain why Lazio is not spending money. Because you simply didn't give it. So, don't complain if in summer Lazio has to buy Durmiz instead of Paolo Maldini. It's simply because you didn't go to the stadium. You didn't buy the shirt. You buy the false shorts uh, that, uh, that uh, you can find near the stadium that is from the Chinese market, etc. That's all your fault. Don't blame Lotito. You're, so, you're right on that. But when you're saying that you made 80 million profit the year before and you have that profit to buy players, it doesn't help either, right? So I, I agree with you that if you're a true fan, you're a true fan. But I'm, I'm speaking that I, wouldn't, I would still go regardless if we didn't have a Cristiano Ronaldo. But the perception of some fans are always going to be that our team doesn't spend enough to buy better players. Our team always qualifies only for Europa League. We're always a middle team. Why am I going to support for this team if the results are like that? And it's unfortunate because you don't want to see that. If you're, it's true. If Leeds is selling out 31, 35,000 every game, those are true fans regardless of who they buy. But as Alistair said, if our marketing department doesn't do a good job and if they don't renovate and, and revamp the Stadio Olimpico and make it better for the atmosphere, it's going to be hard to attract people to come watch the game and it's unfortunate the fans who they say who are true fans and do complain about what Latito does they, they have to think that if you're a fan regardless you're going to go thick and thin and, and I agree with you you shouldn't make a difference if 
if who you buy or what you have on the field. You're going to, to watch the team, not the players, but you're always going to get that mixed perception of fans, some who are devoted and will go regardless who is on the field, and you're going to get the other side who, who want Lutito to buy players and are tired of just seeing Europa League, as you can see on Thursday with only 12,000 fans going. It, 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 it becomes uh, annoying for some fans. They don't want to see that anymore. But uh, it, it is unfortunate that Lazio has to deal with this and hopefully something that can be overcome. I wasn't against you, Jerry. Uh, no, no, no. I know, I know. <laughs> but, you know, these things drive me crazy. I mean, you are, you are a fan of your team, even if it gets relegated. You, you simply are a fan. And I feel, and Alistair maybe knows it even better because now he's in Rome, that there's a lot of press radios about Lazio that are doing exactly that. Uh, inviting fans to not go to the stadium, to not give money to Lotito. And this is only creating problems to the, to, to the club, not to Lotito. I haven't come across an awful lot of that, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, th these, these are essentially arguments that Lazio fans talk about, right? And that sounds like an obvious thing to say if we're talking about going to watch Lazio. But at the end of the day, I still think it just has to be more of an event than a football match to, to increase that attendance. You know, it has to become, you know, about more than just the football. Yes, we all want to see a good team. We want to play in the Champions League. We want to see great players, all that kind of stuff. But to convince, you know, your average person, to for me to convince my girlfriend to come along or my dad came to his first ever game recently when he was visiting things like that you you have to sell that to those people as it being a, a you know like a cultural experience like a true roman experience things like that but it's it's not on its own they're not doing enough to make this a fun day out i think it, that it really is something needs to be fixed and it might sound a bit frivolous to some people saying that but i think it makes a big difference like you say vittorio you're not a man city fan but you could still go along to watch man city play atalanta with your family and have a good time because they, they set it up as a fun day out, a fun evening out, and you can enjoy yourselves. And the football match is part of it, but it's far from being the full, uh, you know, the only thing that you're there to do. So, yeah, I think that the, this again kind of takes us essentially all the way back to the argument of a new stadium and the benefits of what you can do by owning your own stadium because. Lazio's hands are tied to a certain extent by what they can actually do, what they can put on at the Stadio Olimpico without having to get in arguments with, with uh, Connie, presumably. So, yeah, I don't think we want to go all the way down that road again at this stage of the podcast tonight, but, uh, yeah, I think that essentially would be something that would really sort us out, would be owning our own ground. Yeah, I think... I think we can close it up here, right, guys? I don't know if you... Alizer, do you have the stats of the week? Stats of the week? Uh, yeah, just give me one sec. <laughs> you never I come prepared. For everybody. Come on, Jerry. Don't worry, I got two stats. I got two stats. Yes. Who's the leading goal scorer and who's the leading assist? <laughs> uh, Luis Alberto and Bastos Tito and Noble, and... baby. <laughs> oh, Bastos. You know what? If Bastos... Was a striker. Uh, I think that uh, I think he can pop a few in. I, I agree with you. He, he, his movement is really good. I like the way he can move the ball up very well. He had a few chances yesterday. He could have made you happy, but uh, he, he looked uh, a little scared to uh, pull the trigger. Sorry, Mackenzie. <laughs> yeah, he'll get there. He'll get there. He's just a bit nervous. The one there's a kind of updated stat, I suppose, on one they used last week, which is about Immobile and Korea's partnership, and it is now the most prolific partnership in Europe's top five leagues. 17 goals between them. So they moved ahead of Aguero, Sterling and Lewandowski Nabri. There you go. Without counting Bastos. That's incredible. Well, Bastos is our top own goal scorer, <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> I don't see it very positively, but I don't know. Maybe you have another opinion. Anyway, guys, thank you again for joining us. Uh, and let's hope we're going to talk again 
next week with another great week for Lazio, even though, as I said during the podcast, Radu is out probably a couple of weeks. Same thing for Adam Maruzic. So a little bit the bug injury is affecting Lazio now, but I think still Inzaghi has a lot of option, especially in defense. Uh, thank you very much, Jerry Mancini. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And We're going to win Thursday. Don't worry. I hope so. And uh, unfortunately, Alistair, you didn't have nothing to do tonight. So, well, you were here. Thanks. <laughs> really appreciate you. Uh, guys, uh, as usual, thanks for listening. And uh, we're going to talk next week. Thank you again. Yes. Thanks for listening to Lazio Lounge. Thanks for listening to Lazio Lounge, the podcast in English about La Prima Squadra della Capitale. Remember to rate and review the podcast and follow us on our social account on Facebook at facebook.com slash Lazio Lounge and on Twitter at Lazio underscore lounge. And if you like the show, rate and review the podcast and tell your friends to give it a go. Thank you and always Forza Lazio.